Welcome to Curious Salma. My guest today is Tariq Muhammad. Tariq was my co-worker between 2019 to 2021. He's been living in Dubai for over 12 years. Tariq has a lot of experience in digital learning, in classroom training, travel and tourism, and much more. He's been one of the biggest supporters of my podcast, and so I'm very thrilled to have them in this episode. How are you, Tariq? Salma, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm doing well. Thank you so much for joining me. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me today in your session. Tariq, I've known you for a little bit, but I know that you're full of surprises. I'm pretty sure that we'll find some of them in this episode. First, I want to ask you, what are you curious about? What I'm curious about? That's a good question. What we are all curious about is the future. But what I'm curious about personally is the world. I want, I want to know like what this world is taking us to. Every day is something new happening up in the horizon and we're trying to figure out where we are to the world. The other countries, the other culture around us. I've been traveling for more than 20 countries around the world. I've lived in three of them, which is Egypt, UAE in Dubai, KSA in Riyadh. And every place, it has its surprises. It has its, its mysterious way to live and to deal with the people there. So I'm, I'm so curious about that. I want to know why we are not all unified, like why we are not like all communicating the same way or acting the same way to anything happen around us. It's about adaptability. This is how I can phrase it, like adaptability. Hmm. How, adaptable you are, how adaptable you are for the situation, the places, people, culture, all of this around you. How adaptable you think you are? For me, I think like if we put it on a scale from 1 to 10, I think I'm 7. Yeah, like I'm open for a new experience. I'm open for anything happening around me. I'm, I'm ready to adapt. Of course, not to the extreme, but I'm ready to adapt to how far it's matching with my culture as well, you know, because you still have like some boundaries with what keeps you from being so open to anything happening around you or, around, or happening with you personally. Mm. So you get back to your boundaries like, okay, this is my limit. I'm not going to cross it. Would you feel like your adaptability has helped you, created more resilience for you in the past few years, especially with COVID and us working in travel and tourism and all of that? Sure, sure, Salma. Like, let me take you for a small journey, okay? Since I graduated from my university, it was the, I was, my major study was for the agriculture engineer, okay? And I was supposed to be an engineer who helps the factories for the food and beverage, how to manufacture it and how to get it packed and all of this, all the steps since we got the raw material from the field, okay? However, it wasn't the thing that I liked the most in my life, okay? It was, you know, sometimes it comes from the family that they try to push you, okay, you have to be a doctor, you have to be an engineer and all this stuff from our culture. But I've shifted it once I graduated from the university. So I went to a different field totally different field for me. I have no experience, zero experience about it. Okay. So I went to a telecommunication. I started with telecommunication as a customer service representative. And then I moved from a company to another and jumping to another. Then I moved out from Egypt. So I stretched all my comfort zone and everything around me, moving to uh, United Arab Emirates to Dubai, joining a big telecommunication company here. And I started in a country where I know no one. And like I came on my own. The first day I felt depressed. I felt lost. I felt that I'm missing my family. I'm missing my friends. I'm, I'm just here alone. I'm just connecting to them over the phone. So what's happening to me? But I said, I'm going to make it. And after I spent like three years and a half with them, I moved to a totally, totally different experience in my life, which is banking which I didn't study anything about banking and I have no experience about banking, how the banking things go, you know. So I, usually I got to know like who works for the banking is the people who got studying it. Or I think like the statics and all these kinds of charts and all of stuff like this. Is the, the picture was in my mind at that time when I joined the banking. But when I joined it and I got to know like, okay, it's still at the end of the day, it's a product or a service and you're trying to sell it, to promote it in a way and you like you're building your database with your customer and your clients. You're trying to promote the player that you're working for. You're trying to promote your name 
because I got to know after that that you'll be known by name, regardless of the place that you're working for. So you'll be known by name. Mm. And I started my journey with the banking. I, I, I enjoyed it. I cannot deny that. I enjoyed it because it was like a big challenge in my life. And it gets me into the relationship with different level of people. That I start like dealing with the with the worker and with the CEOs, with the people from the ministries uh, as a minister or just working there or someone who's like a VVV IP as we call it and all of these all these kind of people I, I gain a lot of experience dealing with them. Mm. After that, after I got enough from banking and they said, ah, it's time to stop now. Okay, I moved to the travel and tourism. And this is my passion in life. To travel around the world, to get to know people, stretching your comfort zone to the max. Okay, because as I said at the beginning, that I like to I like to stretch it. How, how much can I, can it be stretched? Like I want to see my extreme. Where where can I go to? So I start like traveling and with traveling, of course, based on my experience, traveling to Dubai at the first time on my own with like with no company or with no colleague traveling with me or something like that. So it gave me that passion that I, I should discover every place that I'm going to on my own. So I start traveling as a solo traveler, just having my backpack and I'm, hey, I'm booking the flight. I'm going there. I'm going to check what people what what are these people are doing. What, what I can learn new in my life, what can help me, what I can utilize from them, what I can add to them, or I can correct them from the idea that they are taking about the Arab people and Egypt. By the way, uh, while traveling, I met a lot of people who were thinking that I'm traveling illegally. And they told me, like, how did you get to our country? Did you came by a boat or something like that? Oh, and they my felt bad. God. Yeah, I felt bad at that time when they, when they raised the, uh, their opinion in this way. Because this is the picture, how they are picturing us. Like you're coming by boat or something like that. I said, no, I'm already, I'm Egyptian. I'm living in Dubai. I have my passport. I have my visa. And they came like normally and legally through the airport itself. And people who start like talking to me, trying to know my background and all this stuff. And I'm telling them about Egypt and all this. And they couldn't believe that, oh, wow, Egypt is going to this way uh, or you're taking this path in your life as an Egyptian, but what, all what we know about Egypt from the media or how we can hear it or how we can picture it, it's just like some people are living in Bedouin or something like that in that kind of tent and you just like have some animals around you and all of this and totally they don't know anything about it. So that's why I was like, you know, I got myself as an ambassador for my, for my country at the first place. Wow. Tare, I'm kind of speechless. You've had quite a journey. And much more. I'm going to surprise you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just curious about something you just said right now. Because yeah. your experience must be different when you're traveling as an Egyptian man, I guess. So when you travel and you, you've you met some, from what you said, some xenophobic comments, but uh, have you also experienced racism? Sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes actually I, I've been facing the racism that they are like, okay, we're not going to deal with you. You're like from from Egypt or you're like an Arab origin and all of this. But it's, you know, it's like a minor percentage. You, you cannot take it as a general rule or you can specify for a specific country or something like that. It's just like a minor percentage. And most of the time when I was facing something like that, okay, I found the people from there that I met them. And it's just like our first meeting or something like that. And we we're just talking. When someone is trying to be racist to me or something like that, the people whom are his family, his relatives or his friends, they are defending me without mm. even to know much more about me. You know, like this is the nature of the human being, I think, that mm. you cannot see someone who's in unfair place or someone is trying to attack him in a way mm. and you just like stay handicapped without trying to help him. So people who like with open mind or the people who travel before, to any Arab country, it's not only about Egypt, but who traveled to any Arab country and they got to know that the culture and the technology that we're reaching to. No, I can see from the way you're talking, the way you're carrying yourself, that you're you're open-minded. You're you're willing to open conversations and talk to different people. And I think that's usually how you know you tackle or you um, face racism or xenophobia or whatever. I feel in general that fear is a very powerful 
emotion that lets people usually make judgments and be scared of like strangers and all of that. But once if you if you try to be I'm I'm not saying like not cautiously, but if you try to be cautiously open and like talk to different people and and just uh, find common ground, that's when you find that mm-hmm. yeah we're we're all the same at the same end of the day or we have a lot in common, much more than you think we think. This is a point exactly. But you know what? There is a fine po- a fine line between being a like surrounded with your fear. Okay. So it doesn't push you. You don't get the to take the initiative or to start the conversation with someone that you don't know or someone like from a different origin or something like that. And some people t- take it like it, this is my challenge. Like, okay, this is my fear that it might be happen anything racist to me or or something like that will make me feel like down or will okay will affect me badly or something like that. I mean, with the feeling with the emotions. However, that the people who are stretching it. And taking it, taking it as a challenge, okay, are the most successful people. In my point of view, of course, I'm talking about my point of view. But from my point of view, yes, the people who are taking the challenge, because in each challenge you find the chance. So don't let it, don't let it take you down, or don't let yourself just surround it with your fears and ideas in your mind, because you'll never know until you do it. Tore, when I met you, I think you were working in customer service for a while. But then you switched to digital learning, right? Yes, it was uh, starting with the customer service and the customer experience, working on the feedback of the customer, voice of customer, and all of these elements that we used to work our, about. And then moved to the uh, learning, which is learning and development uh, department. And mm. there we've been working with the classroom training, how to arrange the classroom training, delivering the training. Like you, of course, as you said, that the learning management system that we start using yet in, at the time of the COVID because it was a big challenge for everyone. Mm. So we have tried to get out of the routine or get out from what we used to do normally, like a face-to-face training and face-to-face meeting because all transfer to the uh, digital platform. What do you like about digital learning the most and what do you like about what do you hate about it or don't like? I'll start with the second one, which is what I don't like about it. Okay, so what I don't like about it is the uh, engagement. Engagement in the way of the classroom training gives you the space of to interact with people. You know, the eye contact, it's very important hmm. from, from my side because I, I experienced both of them. Okay, so from my side, the eye contact, the body language, everything helps you, uh, and you can consider it as a channel, as a channel, in order to deliver your message, in order to deliver the information. Different ways you can know from the facial expression from your audience if they got what you mean, or if you got if they got what you want to tell them, or they didn't get it. Because some people are shy to say that I don't understand, or to raise a hand, or something like that. So that's why I prefer the in classroom training more than the uh, digital learning in this way only. However, with the digital learning, I like it because I myself, I studied a lot of things and a lot of courses and a lot of diplomas. I got it digitally. I got it online, like more than 28 diploma. I got it online. Okay. And they added to my link and, and of course, and I've used a lot of, you know, like it, with the LMS or with the learning management or the digital learning, everything is just like click away from you. Any information that you want to know about, anything that you want to study about. Sorry, what makes you feel inspired or like your best self? Actually, it's about the future, as I told you. Like, I want to do something for myself. So I'm always keeping a goal ahead, okay? And I'm doing all my best for this goal. Regardless what the, like, the opposite guy, what I find in my way or something like that. But I'm keeping, like, a major goal and I'm going for it. Any short-term goal, yes, you might get some obstacle or you might like turn turn your way away from it or something like that. Ignore it. Sometimes you can like, okay, it affects you for a while and something like that. But if you don't have like a major goal or like a long-term goal, so anything can make you down. It's only about the goals. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking now of what are my goals. I'm, I'm still discovering. <laughs> I'm trying <laughs> to discover, but I love how ambitious you are. It's It's all over your voice and how you interpret things thanks Alma. but you're doing get actually you're doing it and i admire you <laughs> even with your podcast this one you know like i'm one of the best fan or the biggest fan for your podcast oh my god i see it like yeah i see it like a big step that you took it 
you got the courage, you got to do something that you'd like to do or a dream that you've been dreaming? Yeah, yeah, jumping in, uh, in water is something I like doing. <laughs> jumping in <laughs> and seeing if I can swim or not. But I'm, I'm just honestly having fun, as I'm telling you. I'm having a lot of fun uh, knowing about people and their stories. And um, in, the past few ye- in the past two years, let's say, right, you've been through uh, some tough time or hard time and experiences, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah it, was a, it was a very bad one for me. Well, everywhere in the world, we know like when COVID hit, a lot of people became unemployed or got laid off, got redundant, a lot of stuff. So uh, I'm pretty sure that a lot of people listening will relate in a way. And I want to know generally, what did you learn from the experience that now that you're coming out of it stronger and you're moving past it? And as as I can see from your voice, as I said, like on your stories that you're not afraid of challenges, not afraid of having goals for yourself. What did you learn through that tough experience of unemployment? Well, from the experience since the COVID start, first of all, I was in case A by that time. I was on a business trip there. Okay, and I got stranded for eight months in case A and I felt depressed. Yes, and I felt depressed there because it was like surrounded by four walls, nothing else. I'm unable even to see the street or to walk in the street or something like that. It's, it was like 24 hours lockdown and with the curfew timing, my visa got expired because I was an overstay. Okay. I was supposed to be there for three months and they stayed for eight months. So my visa is already overstay on it. So it was like a hard situation in my life. And I felt like this is my end. I'm going to die here. Okay. But from there, once I got my, yes, once I got my flight going back to Dubai and from Dubai, I took like two weeks at a vacation to Egypt to see the family and all that and to back again on my feet. So yes, I learned a lot. I learned that it's not the end. Sometimes it gets darker before it starts shining again. And that was happening with our drone every, every, every day. But what I can tell you from my experience that the most important thing always think about the future have a backup for yourself because you don't know at what time you're gonna get stuck hmm. i've started like as we've been discussing off air a two line of business and okay i'm trying myself like okay it's something that i like to do i like to take a risk i like to try something new i i like to challenge myself even if i didn't find any challenge around me i i like to challenge myself like what's the best of you why you can do better okay so i started these two line of business a uh, back home in egypt and it didn't go well maybe i i was like i don't have the enough experience for it okay or i didn't start the market in in a better way also being away from the egyptian market for a long time so it affects on me of course so i was considering everything will go smoothly and yes you can have your chance you can show that if you will make it or not or all these things, but when it doesn't work with me and they find that everything got destroyed, I'm just hanging in the air. So I said, okay, I'm going to back again to step back. It's not a bad thing to do in your life. Sometimes you need to step back just to fly. Okay. So as you can know, like in, from our experience, let's get to this point from our experience in travel and tourism, the flight, when the flight is boarding and all of this stuff, there is no flight, it's just running to the runaway directly. It should step back from where it was like loading the people and boarding the people and all of this. And after that, it goes to the runway and takes its step. So yeah, I'm like for myself, I'm considering myself as a flight. This is how I describe myself. I'm just in awe of what you're saying now. Tarek, do you have a definition for success? Definition of success, it varies from a person to another. You yeah. know, like some people see the success in money. Some people see it with the title, your job title. Some people see it like in your acceptance and your selfie. So for me, so the the definition of success, when you see everyone around you happy, when people around you are happy, okay, you'll feel satisfied and you'll feel successful that you did something that make them happy for them. I mean, like if you are the one or if you are the reason for them to be happy. So you did something to be proud of, okay? At the same time, the people around you are feeling happy because of you. So this is the definition of success. As long as everyone around me is happy, I'm very proud of myself. I'm a successful person. By the way, it's not an easy thing to do. 
it's not easy to have everyone happy yes to have everyone happy around you it's not easy at all because sometimes you find like okay you're making one happy the other one is not happy like 100 percent. he's just like 50 50 and you have to work more or to do more you try to balance sometimes you like you set with yourself like putting your okay what did i do and what what should i do instead and all of these things you, you have to think about it it keeps you awake 24 7 Salma. like honestly i'm telling you sometimes i was dreaming about things happening in my day okay during my day and i'm just like analyzing it while i'm while i'm sleeping like i'm thinking about it okay why shouldn't i do it this way it was to be better it was to have like a better effect that's overthinking right there <laughs> if it keeps you up at night or insomnia i don't know <laughs> <laughs> If you could go back and give your 18-year-old self one piece of advice, what would it be? It's a lot of advice, actually. It's not only one or just a piece of advice. It's a lot. But you know what? I was to do everything the same way how I did it. Because I don't regret anything I did. Whether it's bad or good, I don't regret it because I learned a lot from, from it, from the experience itself, from the situation, from the life. I learned a lot. But if I was to give myself like a piece of advice, don't trust the the life, especially after what happened in the last two years. Sorry, don't don't trust you. Don't trust what? Life. Don't trust life. Yes. Hmm. That's kind. That's kind of vague. Mm, if yeah. you, imagine if you <laughs> okay. go back to your eighteen year old self as like a a, 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 a guy in his thirties, and you're like telling him, "Don't trust life." <laughs> what do you think? How do you think yourself, your old self, would react? <laughs> <laughs> yeah of course <laughs> exactly exactly but no, no one's gonna understand it the way how you picture it. because your experience your life uh, everything that you've been through all these years okay you cannot just like phrase it in a piece of advice or something like that you cannot give it because it's different scenarios different situation every day you're facing something new okay every day you're having a new chance every day you're having a new challenge in your life Okay, and you if you cannot overcome these challenges and catch the chances and let it go and the way of thinking itself, like every day Simon we have something new, like let's get back. Okay. When I was in high school, okay, the high school time for me was like the most amazing time because it was the time of everyone is having a new computer at home as a desktop. I have my own computer, I have my headset, I'm playing games. Of course not online, I'm playing it just just on, on my own, or we're playing this land, this kind of land, me and my friends were like together, and the cell phones and how this revolution of the cell phones start being. Nowadays, if you look at the kid who's like two years old, he's holding a cell phone and he know how to play his cartoon. Some of them, I met like kids in the age of eight, between eight to 10, okay? And they are doing coding and decoding for programming. They are programming applications and games. That's just amazing. So it's totally, yeah, it's it's totally different. You know, like you cannot compare it. You cannot give the same advice that what work with you to someone else because you don't know what he's going to go through. Maybe it's totally different. Can I tell you something? I think this is the best answer I've got sure. to this question so far because this question is has has a fallacy in itself. Yeah, you cannot go back to yourself, old self, and tell them to change things. Yeah. But I liked so much that you're saying, yeah, I don't regret things because it's part of the experience, part of the journey and all of that. Sometimes I wish I have that sentiment, but <laughs> I i mean, it's so hard to say I don't have regrets. I, I envy people who say that. Oh, I don't have any regrets. Everything goes back to the journey. Because to be honest, no, I have some regrets for sure. I don't know. I mean, it, it, I think it has to do with self-acceptance and, you know, just like... Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's about the self-acceptance. And you know what? I'll tell you something. Mm. This is an advice for you, Sanma, on air right mm. now. Give yourself one hour to forget about anything happened or affected you badly. Give yourself a 60 minutes. 60 minutes to think about it, to grave, to feel bad, to feel sorry, to cry, to scream, to do whatever. And after this 60 minutes, back to normal again. Just 60 minutes? That's what it takes? 60 minutes. <laughs> Believe me, it's more than enough. <laughs> You'll find yourself like it. after half an hour, you're, ah, I'm good. Wow. Nothing happened. I'm still alive. <laughs> okay. No therapy needed then. It's just 60 minutes by yourself. No. You'll be your own therapy. What? Wow. <laughs> 
Well, people can be their own therapists. It's just just about like sitting with your emotions, as you just said, uh, in a way and reflecting, you know, journaling, doing all of that. It seems very easy. Like in theory, it's very easy. Anyone can do it. But yet a lot of us need to like have conversation with a therapist where they ask them tough questions because on their own, they won't do it. Yes. You try to avoid it as much as yeah, you can. Yeah. Your, 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 your own self is like sometimes not working with you on it. But as, as long as you're reaching this a level with yourself, I mean, about the honesty and all of this, like, okay, why did I admit it? And I'll just take it from there. So if you if you reach this level, you'll have a piece of yourself. Yeah. Like you won't be ashamed. You won't be trying to avoid anything that you did or to regret or something like that, as we said. And the self-acceptance will be very, very, very high. Like you'll be open to yourself. You know yourself, which we call it like, let's, let's link it with my field, which is training now. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's self-awareness. So you know yourself. You are the better one or the best one who knows yourself. Nowadays, okay, it's like everybody start like starting about it. Mm. Uh, emotional intelligence, okay, it start taking like a big part in our lives nowadays, and people are start like being okay, uh, being self-awareness, being like social awareness, uh, creating a network, trying to understand the emotions or the uh, reactions of the other people around you. And you're trying to get to understand it, okay, and analyze it in a way that you are trying to understand. You're not just like checking it for the sake of revenge or for the sake of defending or for the sake of re- replying back or something like that. So that's why the self-awareness and social awareness, it's very important nowadays. N- nicely put. Do you have a favorite productivity hack? I, I like to go as planned. So I, I like to plan everything ahead. And sometimes I'm putting like a plan A, plan B. As I'm telling you, like, okay, yes, I'm trying to like to put a plan for my day, for my week, for my month ahead and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. On the on the morning, I start my day not talking to anyone. And this is me. Okay. This is me <laughs> yeah, as I'm well. just having my co- <laughs> Yeah, I'm just having my coffee, not talking to anyone. If I'm going to work or something like that, so I'm just like driving my car to work. And once I arrive there, I'm having my second coffee. And yes, good morning. It's a new day. So let's take it from here. Mm. Sometimes I go with the with a to-do list or a checklist, as you said. Like I go, okay, so I have this to do. I, time management. Time management is the key word, Salma. Like I'm telling you I, after an experience, a personal experience, time management is a key word. I try on myself. Like I try to woke up an hour earlier than what I used to wake up to my work, okay? And when I woke up this hour earlier, I found that my day is longer. At the end of the day, it's the same 24 hours that every one of us is having, okay? But I felt like my day is longer. Like, okay, I'm not rushing to get ready and shower to go to work and all of this stuff. I'm not driving, like, need for speed on the way to get to work and just keep, like, jumping here and there between the people on the way. So, yeah, I'm having my time. It's my time. The thing what I have for myself, it's my time, okay? So using my time or utilizing my time, this is the key word. Okay, I woke up early. I woke up, I, of course, till I reached work, I was super active. I wasn't still sleepy and I need for like a lot of coffee and to read my emails only just like to mingle between it. No, I, I was so active. I'm ready to do it right now. I found myself at the end of the day, okay, so I'm... I start thinking during my day or in my break time, what I'm going to do after work. I mean, just going home, like to eat and sleep and that's it. Or I can like, okay, catch up with any of my friends. Let's meet at a coffee shop. Let's like, if it's a weekend or something like that, let's go plan camping, go hiking or do something extraordinary. Let's get out of the routine. Okay. Some people are just utilizing the 24 hours to wake up, go work, back from work eat, sleep. And this routine killed their life, killed their skills. I'm telling you, honestly, after people like a hundred people I've seen in my life, the people who are controlling their time are the successful people. So you mentioned that some of your hobbies outside work and career are like hiking and doing outdoorsy stuff, right? Yes, yes. I really enjoy doing the outdoor activities. Mm. Such as going to the beach, swimming, if you don't have like time, like enough time to go hiking or camping or something like that. So yeah, I go swimming. I go like 
outdoor activity, anything like playing football with my friends. I know lately that you have joined a volleyball team and I know that you're enjoying it. <laughs> I haven't played in a while, honestly, but like, yeah, last year I was, I was enjoying it a lot. I was doing it frequently every week. I'm hoping to get back to it after summer because now it's too, too hot for me. Yeah, really it's well. too hot now, yeah. However, I can see people at, by the beach now that they are playing volleyball, like arranging this kind of... I was supposed tournament. to go yesterday, but I couldn't. Like, it's too hot. I, I, just, thought of, oh. I just thought of the last time I was hi- dehydrated. No, uh, this is we, the comfort zone, Salma. This is, comfort this is not the comfort trying, zone. I almost <laughs> died. You're trying, you're trying to no. put your fear in front of you. <laughs> no, but like Use actually happened. Reason. I played last August uh, beach okay. volleyball. And although I drank lots of water all the time, I was drinking water. But, yeah, by, but this summer, it's a rainy by the time summer. I went home, I was dehydrated still and had a horrible headache. This is knowing your boundaries. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but no, I'm, I might do it. Like, uh, as I said, I enjoy. But what else do you like doing um, other than outdoor sports? Do you like movies, uh, music? I like series, actually, uh, than the movies. Okay. Like, mm-hmm. I like something to take me in a story that I can come out with. Something that I can learn from it. And mostly, I'm depending on the, uh, like, the true paced stories. Mm. Of course, I'm listening, to, I'm listening to music. So... Techno is the life. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> my, <laughs> my next question was going to be about what song always gets stuck in your head. So when you tell me techno now, I'm like, hmm. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> techno is the life. <laughs> is there a techno track that gets stuck in your head then? No, mostly all of it. I love it. But most, I, like, most of the time I'm listening to Black Coffee. Black coffee. Oh, I like black coffee. Player. Yeah. Of course, of course. Like, he gets you out of the worst. You know, even the time when I'm planning that for work, like when I'm working and I'm doing a plan, like a plane, a training plan, and all of this stuff, we're trying to put my schedules, uh, putting the draft and the objectives of my training and all of this. I'm listening to techno while I'm doing all of it. I don't know, like it relaxes me. Mm-hmm. It keeps me in in a good mood. So it's not about the music more than it's like something that you do and you love and it gets to the inner points inside you. So, What's the best uh, life lesson you learned from a series? A best life lesson I learned from the series. So don't run after the money. It comes to you at the time. Which series was that <laughs> that taught you that lesson? This was a Breaking Bad. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Have you seen Better Call Saul? Yeah, of course. Bugad? Of course. After I, after I finished directly, I went to Better Call Saul. But uh, yeah, it's on the finale now. Let's not spoil it, but it's it's really good, right? Have you tried or watched the How to Get Away with a Murder? Yeah, I watched it. Yeah. I uh, I liked <laughs> it up to a certain season. I don't remember. what I watched all of it, but up to a certain season when I was like not rooting for them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like I was like, I don't want them to get away with murder. They've done a lot. They deserve to be in jail, all of them. <laughs> but I like their way, how they were gathering together, having the teamwork, everything organized. We can cover up each other. And <laughs> I, They lost my empathy at one point. I was like, no, that's too much. They just don't deserve it anymore. <laughs> Thought it was one question you wish I had asked you and how you would have answered. One question I wish that you have asked me is when we're going to catch up in person. As both of us are living here in Dubai, and oh. <laughs> for the past two years, we didn't get in touch. So yeah. I was waiting for this question, and there was, of course, to answer, like, whenever it's, like, free time for you, just hit me up, and let's catch up. <laughs> sure, this week. This week, we'll do something. Sure, let's do it. Let's, let's do it. Do it. I'm, I'm free in the weekend, like, Sundays, I'm always available. Where can listeners find you online, Tore? I'm very active on LinkedIn. Facebook. Be... Thank you so much, Tore, for joining me today. I really enjoyed getting to know more about you. Thank you, Salma. It's really my pleasure. And once again, congratulations. You're doing great, as I said, and I keep repeating it. I admire you for the step that you take it with the podcast that you're uh, doing right now and with your amazing sessions. I'm following up and I keep listening to all of it. So keep it up. Do great. You rock it. Thank you. (laughs) Thanks, daughter.